They were trying to get him into what they were doing. The confederacy. They tried to get him into what they were doing. And the Lord said to him, stay far from him. Get away from them. Don't get involved with them. Don't let them get you afraid. Yesterday I wrote about that. About say no to fear. Don't let them get you afraid. The only person you should be afraid of, if you're going to be afraid of, is God. He says, sanctify him. The Lord God will be always in your heart. And let him be himself. And let him be your fear and your dread. So that means, walk perfectly before God. Right? Walk righteously before God. Respect his law. Live for him. Right? And just concentrate on him alone. That's what is my aim and determination. To concentrate on him. I'm not interested in what they're doing to try to scare people. Right? The scripture said, Let him be your fear and your dread. As we said, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of a living God. Right? And it is a dreadful thing. Okay? Because as we said, when God is going to fight, he doesn't use bombs and these things that destroy the earth. But he uses things that are cold. And he uses things that actually just immobilize mankind. Just like that. It doesn't hurt the earth. After where the earth is here. Just like when you have the winter that decimates the soil. There's no grass, nothing. Not, nothing, nothing, nothing. But the soil is still there, healthy. When the springtime comes, before you know it, another month or so, you don't even remember if it was... Right? The earth is still healthy. Okay? The scripture said, but they are destroying the earth. And they are destroying the people on the earth. And as God said, one of the greatest things, the worst thing you can do, is to shed innocent blood. The Bible does say that. Okay? And God said, He will not, will not let you go free for that. He's going to hold you guilty for that. So the scripture says here, and He shall be for a name. And this is prophecy about Jesus here. And, and, um, and for a sanctuary. He shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. For a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be, be snared and be taken. So he says, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And, and he said, I will wait upon the Lord that hide his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. So this was talking about Jesus. The scripture said, he was a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So these people were asking for the sign, but when the sign came, I said, no, this can't be it. This can't be it. No. Did the Bible say you're supposed to come out of Bethlehem? So how come he comes out of Nazareth? But he did come out of Bethlehem. But you were late and catching the sign. And if you research it, you'd have found out that he came out of Bethlehem. Right? Because we know it today. So they could have known it too. Right? But when they found out, the Bible said they stumbled. Then he was not the kind of guy they were, want, they were looking for. He was not the glamour guy. When, when Peter, the Lord told the disciples that he was going to die in his, up in Jerusalem, they said to him, Say, Master, Peter called him aside and said to him, man, you can't talk those things about the people, man. You're a star. You're, I mean, you know, you're popular. I mean, you, you can't be telling people you're going to die. I mean, you know, you're going to hear these movie stars today and these stars talk like that, right? And sometimes, as I said, they're suffering unto death. And then when they drop dead, then people say, well, why, how did that happen, right? But I'm saying to you, he wants him to act like that. And Jesus was a humble man. Because these things didn't mean anything to him. Right? The glamour of this world meant nothing to him. Okay? And the scripture went on to say, verse 18, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the house of from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And the scripture tells in Hebrews chapter 2 that it was speaking about Jesus. Right? He was a sign. And we are signs today. 
right? We are for signs and wonders, right, in this earth. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and mutter, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living, as um, for the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Hallelujah. So this is another thing which is happening in the world today, right? Witchcraft spreading like, like wild, okay? And um, people who are, who are dealing in, in devious arts, right? And people are running to these things as a solution to their problem. As I said before, I said, why does somebody put, on, put your picture into this frame and I'll tell you your future. I can tell you who you are. I can tell you all these things. Why is always somebody supposed to know who you are? I'm a dead stranger to you, so how am I gonna know? I'm gonna have to be a prophet. Are you gonna have to be somebody who is from the devil? who is in a psychic or somebody, as the Bible says, a wizard. So what power is that person using to be able to tell who you are? You must consider that. But these things are popular. As I said the other day, I saw on YouTube or something tell you about that. Um, um, if you, they can assign you a guardian angel. Now, and if you really go onto that website to get a guardian angel, you know definitely God is not talking to you. Because you should know that no man can assign you a guardian angel. Okay? No website can assign you a guardian angel. Right? No website. No, no man. It has nothing to do with man. Okay? So these are signs in the earth. And Jesus himself was a sign. And we today are a sign. I am a sign. And David said he's a sign to a generation. He was a sign to a generation. And so we want to go over here to the next scripture, which is in Matthew chapter 12. So when Jesus was here, his disciples, and he walked his earth with his disciples, the scribes and Pharisees asked him for a sign. And they were always wanting a sign. Because as Paul said, even after Jesus was resurrected, he, um, he said, the Jews seek after a sign, and the Greeks seek, seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews um, a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. Right? So that's what is happening to many people today. To Jesus is a stumbling to them Jesus is a stumbling block. He's he's um that block there that makes you say no, it can't. Can't be him. And then another set of people is, is foolishness. Right? But as Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For herein is the righteousness of God revealed from face to face. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Right? And so he said, we preach. We still preach it. We still preach it. So here we are preaching. And, and Jesus said, the scripture said, then certain of the, of the scribes and Pharisees, verse 38, answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. And he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the west valley, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall arise in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The men of this, the, the queen of the south, that's the queen of Sheba, shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. 
and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. What we're talking about is about signs. How people depend on signs, but they do not have faith. So they do not make a connection with what is the truth. They will always be asking for signs. Because Jesus was saying here, that hey, look at these Ninevites. They were not Jews. They were not Israelites. They didn't learn about the true God like you do. They worship idols. And they were deep in idolatry. And they were sinning on God to the place where God was going to destroy them. But when Jonah came and told them, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. The king heard about it. And the king said, You know, I don't want my people to be destroyed. I don't want my nation to be destroyed. I better do what the prophet says. And he called for fast in Nineveh. That even the animals, he said, don't give them any food. Let us fast to God. Because we don't want to be destroyed. What a sincerity. Right? And God said, you know, I appreciate what these people have done. I'm not going to destroy them again. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, a prophet who came from another country and came to them. And the scripture said, the Lord said, but you know, a greater than Jonah is here. I'm here. The Lord said, I am here. A greater than Jonah. You're asking for a sign. And I am here as a sign. And I'm also doing signs and wonders. So I am a sign. From the day I was born, I'm a sign. And, 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 and right now, I'm a sign. And I'm doing signs and wonders in this earth, right here before your eyes. Are you still asking me for a sign? What other sign can I give you? And he said, three days and three nights, as Jonah was in the whale's belly, so I'll be in the, in the grave three days and three nights. So now you're going to have to wait and watch for that sign. But by the time that sign comes to pass, I'll be gone. I won't be walking among you again as I used to. Because I'll be resurrected. And then i go back to my father. Now let me go back to that a little bit. Because the scripture spoke about the queen of Sheba. Who came from uh, uh, way, way down in Ethiopia. Came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. The Bible said, when she heard, she said, is, is this, I got to see, I got to see, right? And when Jesus was there on earth, there were people who were coming from distant places saying, I got to see this Jesus. I got to see this man. And there are people right in his own, right in his own territory who are still asking him for a sign. As I said earlier, and I will keep on saying it, that when he was born, the wise men came from the east asking for him. They wanted to see the, the baby king. Right? And even now that he's grown, a grown man, they're still asking for a sign. Like the Queen of Sheba who came from the south. She came from a distance too to come to see Solomon because he was a sign in those days too. Right? But Jesus said, but a greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Jonah is here. Right? A greater than Jonah is here. And the scripture said that Jonah, he gave them a sign. And, and he said, you're going to have to wait some more if you want a sign. If all of these signs that you're seeing now you can't believe. You're going to have to wait for your sign. And by the time you get your sign, it will be too late. And that's what we're talking about today. That's what the word of message that God has given me today. That we have to be careful of this thing about we asking for signs. And as I was asking for signs. 
lest you get to a point where God would say, well, okay, you're going to get a sign. But by the time that sign comes to pass, it will be too late for you. Too late. Because as I said, when that sign, you would have to wait for him to be in grave. And by the time he's resurrected, it's done. It's all over. It's all over. He won't be here anymore. He was gone. He'd be going back to heaven. Right? He wouldn't be going walking around them teaching again. It's done. You're not going to go out there with healing. It's done. All those things were done. See, you better take it while you can get it. These signs which we have seen in this earth here, from before I was born and since I was born, we better pay attention to these signs. Instead of being talking about, we always want to see a sign, want to see a sign. Because as I said, when the Lord came, these people had the privilege of hearing that the king was here afterwards. But we, can, we can't do that. We have to believe in the king before he comes. As I said, like the 420 elders, they said we are celebrating his, his coming before he actually comes. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Right? That's what we're talking about. Asking for a sign, waiting for a sign, and then you're waiting for a sign until it's too late. Because by the time when the sign comes to pass, in fact, they weren't even going to believe it anyway, but they had to believe it because they knew that it happened. But by that time, it couldn't do anything for them. Because everything was closed. It was closed for them. Alright? Now, let's, let's look at um, another scripture here in Mark. And in Mark chapter 8, Jesus gave them a sign there. But look at what happened in Mark chapter 8. The scripture says, verse 10, And straightway he, can, he entered into a ship with his disciples, and came into the coast of Dalmutha. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven. Come on. Sign from heaven. Yeah, come on. Again? And he sighed deeply in his spirit. You know, you know, and sometimes somebody sometimes somebody does something and you you just grieve inside, you just like you don't even know what to say for a moment. Bible says he sighed deep in spirit. He couldn't answer for a moment. He just said, oh, you know, these people are so hard-hearted, right? They will not believe the signs that they're seeing. And there are people today just like that. And there are people in the church still waiting for a sign. What are they waiting for? Because they're listening to false prophets. And these people and I'm not telling you about the times in which we live. As Paul said, the times and the seasons, you have no need that I write unto you, because you already know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Okay? That was a sign. He said, you know. That's what he told the Thessalonians. But what would he tell us today? He said, you already know. These things were given to you. And, and 2,000 years later, right, when all these signs are taking place among, around us, we have seen them, right? We have been through it. What are we going to say? We are going to still be asking for a sign. The Bible said, he sighed deeply in, uh, in spirit and said, Why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. Right? The scripture said that, he said that evil and adulterous generation seeking after a sign. Right? Now, what, what are the signs? If you're not going to live for God, 
You're not going to change your ways. You're not going to prepare for His coming. What is the sign going to do for you? The sign is more going to condemn you. That's why Jesus said. That's what He said. He said, Woe unto you, Capernaum. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. Right? He said, If the mighty works which were done in you were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, or Tyne's Island, they would have repented in, in sackcloth and ashes. And he, he said that to let them see how grossly evil they were. And some came to him and told him about, about how Pilate mingled people's blood with their sacrifices. And he said to them, you think these people were more wicked than anybody else? That you really think you're any better? I'm just saying my own words. He said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. He said, I know that a tower fell down and some people are still home. But you think it's because they were, were, were wicked that you people walking around here freely? He said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You know that scripture? Alright. That's I think Luke chapter 13. Alright. Alright. So I'm saying to you, what is the point of wanting a sign? Right? It is Luke chapter 13, right? And you can read it for yourself. I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall not likewise perish. Right? So I'm saying to you, what is the purpose of asking for a sign when you don't intend to change your ways? You have no intention of drawing closer to God. As he said, draw nigh unto God, and he draw nigh unto you. Then he said, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. So why do we want a sign? So the Bible said, Jesus told them, he said, I'm not giving you a sign. Right? I'm not giving you a sign. He said, you're not playing the games with them. You ask for a sign, even though you had signs around you, I am a sign. Jesus saying, I'm a sign. I gave you signs in the heaven. You didn't believe. I gave you signs on earth. You didn't believe. And now, I get out of this ship, right? What about my ministry? And you come now, interrupt me now, um, you know, about you want a sign. I give you a sign when I have my work to do, and my father sent me to do. It's just wasting time. Giving you the sign is accomplishing nothing. Because the signs were given to us for us to prepare ourselves for the coming of the King. That's what was given to us for. That's what was given to us. And when John the Baptist came, he was assigned to their generation. Because the Bible said, you know, if I don't send up Elijah, who was John the Baptist, I'm going to have to smite these people with a curse. So I'm going to send Elijah, who was John the Baptist, that he will prepare the hearts of the fathers, prepare them for the coming of the Lord. So today, I'm here just like John the Baptist and Elijah, preparing the hearts of people for the coming of the Lord. That's what I'm doing. That's the commission that God has given to me. And the scripture said, there shall no sign be given this generation. And he left them and entering into the ship again, departed to the other side. So he just walked away from them like, he got out of the ship, the Bible said, right? And when he got out of the ship, they come asking him for a sign. And he just said, no sign. He turned back and got in the ship again. He said to um, Peter, Andrew, he said, let's go, let's go. No sign. We're not giving them any sign. God has run out of signs. And one day, God is going to run out of signs where this world is concerned. Okay? Because the, the thing is, is that just as we spoke about the destruction of the temple um, in AD 70, that those who were watching for the signs that Jesus had given, they went out to the city. And they knew that destruction was at hand. And they prepared themselves. 
So the children of God who know and they believe in the coming of the Lord prepare themselves. I'm telling you, I don't need any more signs. I don't know about you. I don't need any more signs to tell me that Jesus is the King of the Jews. I don't need any more signs to tell me that His coming is near at hand. And I don't need any more signs to tell me that His coming could be tomorrow. It is near at hand. Okay? Because as I said, many times people used to look at it and used to say, well, oh man, if, if Jesus was to come and sign, oh well, it might take a, a, a hundred years for those signs to be fulfilled. It can only take maybe a thousand years for those things to be fulfilled. You know? And, um, yeah, well, do you think that's how God works? In, in Second Peter chapter 3, what did he say to us? He said that one day with the God is in a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So God not working about his son. There's no sun setting in heaven. Okay? It's set downward, but it, it don't set upward, right? Understand? It's set downward, but not, not upward to heaven. God don't need a, a sun up there. So he's not counting time by days. Okay? He's not counting time as we do. So, this is what happens. And you see what happened in, the, in this country, right? In three months, more people died, in this, in Americans died, than what happened in hundreds of years, right? The history of this country. You think that that could happen? Yeah? Right? And in, 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 in a few months, all the economies of the world just crashed like that. The price of oil, let's say, went down to zero. Zero! Dead zero. I know they didn't say give us, give us the gas for free at the gas tank. At the pump, they didn't give it us. There's hardly anybody going there for gas anyway. What I'm saying, the price went down to zero. Nothing. Right? Nothing. Do you believe something like that could ever happen? And the recession is worse than the Great Recession. The damage that has been done is worse than the Great Recession. So now there's a Great Recession, and now there's a greater recession, which is bringing Thousands and hundreds of thousands of, of people dead with it. Do you believe that could have happened on New Year's Day, January 2020? Do you believe that could ever happen? See, you were thinking to yourself, well, maybe um, we're going to need another hundred years. Okay, well, if another hundred years, and my daddy used to say that, if God was to wait upon man for him to come back, he would never be able to come because each generation have their own plan set up. So even though you might say, well, I'm okay with the Lord to come now, there's another generation come and say, oh, I want to be able to do this and I want to do that and do that. But the thing is, is all of these things will perish. As Peter said, he says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. All these things shall be dissolved. What man of persons are you to be in our holy conversation and godliness? So the scripture said, he said, why does this generation ask for a sign? I mean, every time they're asking for a sign. What more sign do you want? What more sign do you want? As I said to you, God could shut down the preaching of the gospel today. Because the greatest sign that you had was that the fact that a virgin would conceive and bear a son and you would call his name Emmanuel. That son which he gave birth to, as I said, is celebrated throughout the world. And then you turn around and say you don't believe the Bible? And you don't believe the prophet? And you don't believe the sign that God gave with a, with, with, with a woman? that was brought for the, ch the child, was a virgin, and that he himself was our son, was the son of God. Hear what she said? When Jesus turned the water into wine, the scripture said, he said to the people around, he said, what's a, 